to create and configure a Kanban board in Azure DevOps. So hi everyone and welcome once again to Aisha's Scrum Tech YouTube channel. We are super excited to have you all. For our new subscribers, we wanna say thank you so much for tuning in, we appreciate you. For our old subscribers, thank you so much for sticking with us, we appreciate you so much. All right, so for us to be able to even create a Kanban board in Azure DevOps, we need to have an existing project. So when we have an existing project, we go ahead to create, you know, um, a new team, a new Kanban team, you know, and then configure the board to work for us. So um, this video is to uh, address a lot of questions that we've already received from our mentees um, who are asking, how do we create a Kanban board in Azure DevOps? It's so different from the way you create a Kanban board in in Jira, like for those who have used Jira, you know, by the time you're creating the project, they're already asking you, is this Scrum or Kanban, right? So you're selecting which one. But for Azure DevOps, all you need to do is to create that board and exclude the sprint. So the Kanban board is independent of the sprints, right? So let's go ahead to create our new Kanban team. And then we go ahead to configure the board um, the way that it would work for us. So I'll go to project settings. Go to teams and create a new team here. New team, and I'll call this Kanban team. All right, so you can add new team members there. You can also add yourself if you want to be part of that. Of course, if you want new admins or you want to add new uh, admins to this board, you can add them there as well. All right, and then create an area path with the name. Yes, we want to be able to make sure that our area path name is the same as our team's name. That's for everyone to be able to understand them. So we hit create. <clears throat> so now we have our Kanban team. So um, by default, we had this initial team. When we did our last video, we created team A, and then this is our new Kanban team, right? So let's go to boards, uh, to backlog view here. So when we are on backlog view here, um, you see that we have, we need to be able to choose which team board we're looking at, right? So um, you click on this drop down, you see all the teams that are on that are on this project. So we're gonna click on our Kanban team right here. And uh, what I like to do a lot is if I have my own teams, because a lot of times in your company, you see so many teams that are under one project, right? Um, in order for me to make it easy for me, I'll always go ahead to like add it as a favorite for me. So I'll start it. So um, whenever you start it, whenever you're clicking this drop down, your team will be at the top for you to be able to immediately see it. Okay, that said, um, so now this is our Kanban board. Okay, so I'll go to boards here because the boards will still, it's still the same thing here. If it's not the same, you'll filter it as well. So I'll go here. Um, and you see that first things first, this is our board, right? That has the different colors that we want to see. There are two main practices in Kanban that um, ensures that we are actually a Kanban team, basically. So we want to be able to, the first thing is your Kanban board should have a visual representation of how your team's uh, workflow is, right? So. This is our visual representation, but we need to we need to edit or review it to reflect the way that we work. How is our workflow? So do we move tickets from new to approved to committed to done? Or do we want to have other columns here that actually works for us? Um, like for most of the teams that I've worked with, we have new, which represents, okay, a new ticket that has not been worked on. And then we have in progress, and then we have dev complete, uh, we have blocked, and then we have dev complete, you know, and then we have um, in test, we have accepted or UAT, whatever your team chooses, and then we have resolved, we have done, right? So we have all of those ones, um, all of those columns represented on our board here. So everyone can see where the the tickets are or the user stories or work items are, right? So we want to be able to visually see the progress of our work 
as a team works. So that's why we encourage our teams to update their tickets every single day, right? So it's for that purpose, so that at every point in time, we are able to tell what is the progress of our ticket. Okay, the second practice in Kanban is setting up whip limits. Very important. We're going to see how to set that whip limit up. But I just wanted to mention that right here. So those are the two practices which are very important for you to say you have a Kanban team, you should have these two things. All right. So let's say we want to customize our boards to work for us. Um, I'll go to here to settings and I'll go to columns. So you see here, the first option here is a column, right? And the next thing is add column. So whenever you add a column, you can go ahead and edit the name. Let's say we want to have our board as, uh, after new, we want to have in progress, okay? And this is where you set your whip limit. I would always, always want to set my whip limit um, based on the number of team members that I have, right? Again, whip limits is never constant. You can always, you know, work with your team to, you know, revise your whip limit so that it works for you guys, right? So I will always mostly go with the number of team members I have but at times two plus one, right? And then I start to streamline it, especially when it's a new team. I start to streamline it based on how we're getting tickets. Again, you should be very clear um, why your team is even using Kanban in the first place because Kanban will mostly work for support teams and maybe some teams that are very high performing and that just want to use Kanban, you know, to just, you know, um, go on with your work, right? So, um, yes, so setting up that whip limit is very, very important. And you need to make your team to understand that when you set up whip limit, it doesn't mean that, for example, if we have, if we are able to, we have some space for like two tickets, we can just have two tickets. No, the aim is for us to work on one ticket at a time. But of course, with my experience working with support teams, there are a lot of times when we will have priority items that come in, like people are not able to log in or whatever the, the issue might be that we would need to address like ASAP, right? And so we have some capacity in our web limit to pick that on, right? So um, that's just my reason. But again, with time working with a team, as you work with them, you're going to revise your web limits to um, match how you're working until you reach to a good spot and say that, yes, this is what actually works for us. Okay. Um, so let's say uh, I just have two team members here. I'm going to leave my whip limit as five, right? <clears throat> and then if you want to add the definition of done here, like, okay, what do we um, mean by, uh, you know, a ticket is done? What? How do we want to define a definition of done for tickets that are in progress? You can write it on there and then we're going to hit save. Okay, so uh, when you hit save, you see that we have our in progress column here and you see our web limit is at a five. Um, there's also a proofs column that's committed and there's done. You see that this also have like um, web limits, but Azure DevOps automatically sets the web limits at five. So you can change that when you go to column settings as you like, right? There are so many other um, options here to help you ensure that your um, your board is customized in a way that things are projected and you know maybe high priority items are easily visualized and all of that good stuff. So if you want to go the further miles to do that, we talked about all of these other options here, tab colors and styles and fields, all how to do all of that in our previous video. So please hit the link up to watch this video and you'll be able to know how you can customize these other ones, okay? All right, so let's move on. So the next thing here, of course, that we want to be able to do is to ensure that um, we have our states matching our columns, okay? Let me explain what that means. So let's add a new work item here. Let's just say um, set states on what items, 
Okay, let's just say this is a user story, right? So in what I mean by state is when you have your user stories, usually you will see the state right here. Let's open this user story. Okay, you see that this is a state right here. And for the states, if you click on this state, you will see that different from what you have on your columns. So you want to be able to make sure that the states that you have for your work items are equivalent to what you have on your columns on your board. Okay, so um, so the reason why that is important is because if you want to move your tickets, let's say uh, we are in a daily scrum and we're working, we're talking about this ticket, and you want to move, change the state of this ticket. It's easier to just click on the state right here and change the state, right? But if um, you do not have the correct state, you will see that when you change that, it will not reflect on your columns right here. You see, so that's an easier way. So in order for us to easily change the states, let's say we want to move these tickets to approved, right? And we move it to approved and we save it. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, for some reason, I don't know why this one is showing in approved here, but let's say, let's just move it to done. I want, to, I want you to see why that is, right? So, um, so if you want to change these states, right? You want to make sure that it's reflective of what your columns have. So that way um, it doesn't, you know, stay where it is and you feel like you've updated it, but it's not reflecting. So that is how you go about changing your states. Another thing you can do, if we move that back to new, it's going to move. Another way you can move your tickets is just to drag it. So you can drag the tickets as you go, right? You can drag the tickets and move them uh, Click on it and drag it, and it's going to move to where you want it to go. All right, so this is how you will move your tickets around. And, um, of course, all of your tickets are still going to be under your backlog, right? Because your backlog is where you manage all your tickets, whatever it is that you need. This is where you manage all of it. So you can also view, um, if these are just viewing your work items or your product backlog items, um, you can also view features. If you want to look at features that you have on your board, you will click there and you'll see that. Um, of course, if you want to look at the backlog items, you'll click here and you'll see that. Um, so we are actually using an, uh, a Scrum board. If you use an Agile board, you will see that the names are reflective here. It will be user stories. You have epics and features and all, but you can always still edit that. So um, that's how you go about, you know, uh, customizing and configuring your Kanban board. OK, and then another thing that you can do, uh, I'll just talk about this while we are here, is using your filters. Of course, you, when you click on your filters, you can be able to edit anything or see anything particular that you want to see. Let's say you want to see only task, you can click here. And then if you have task, you're going to be able to see only task on your board. Let's say you want to uh, see the items that are assigned to a particular person. You can go here and click on that person's name and you will see only the items that are assigned to that person. Let's say you want to see state is the same thing. You can do that, right? Just click there. That's how you filter your items of what you want to see at a time. And then let's say you want to add more columns to this board. You go here to column options and then uh, you can click on add column. Uh, let's say on this drop down here, you can see a lot of different items here. But I love to see, um, <clears throat> I love to see, uh, I think we already have assigned to. If not, I love to see assigned to. I love to see a ticket and just know who that ticket is assigned to, right? So I love that column here when it comes to the columns that you are seeing on your backlog there. Um, if you want to add any other column as well, you can add it. Uh, uh, let's say comments. I uh, see a lot of teams use comments so that when you have comments, you can easily see that a comment has been added. So you go ahead and click OK. OK, so this is what you're going to have uh, your columns. You see that if you scroll all the way here, you see your different columns that you've added. So if you want to see your states before you see your tags, or if you want to see comments before you see assign me, all you need to do is just drag it. So. Another way of uh, tracking your progress on your Kanban board will be to go to analytics, or of course you can go to dashboards to set your widgets, right? 
So most of the metrics that I used are cumulative flow diagram, where it's going to tell you, you know, um, if you want to set up a period of time to see how much work is in flight, how much work is still, um, you know, uh, left to be done and how much work has been done, all of those good stuff. You want to be able to track, you know, how much time that your team is using to complete work and all of that, you can set it here. Let's say we set it to the last 14 days or last 30 days as you as you would like. And then the columns you want to track, let's say we want to track done, committed, um, approved and in progress. We want to set this for, that's fine. And then, you know, your Kanban board, sorry, your cumulative flow diagram is going to show you how everything looks like for the past 14 days, right? So you can do that. And then, um, of course, you also have the velocity for those teams that are, you know, estimating, you have your velocity here, just seeing how much your team is able to complete for a certain um, period of time, right? So yeah, that's those are some of the metrics you can track under your Kanban uh, board here. And of course, if you want to go further to like even have lead time, settle time, you know, you can go to your dashboard and make sure that you select your team, right? Okay, okay, we got the collaboration project here, but you can add your widgets as you would like. And, you know, track the work, the progress of your team's work, okay? All right, so again, so that's um what we're gonna do here. So we have our level two, level one, level two and level three um programs for Aisha Scrum Tech, right? And our level one, we already have our last session for the year. Level two is where we help Scrum Masters, you know, achieve their dreams of, you know, getting their first Scrum Master jobs. It is intense. You don't want to miss it. Uh, we have a whole community of people who are dedicated to achieve this goal. We also have level three. And level three is for working Scrum Masters who need someone to mentor and coach them and support them at their jobs. Um, our program is so rich and you truly do not want to miss it because we are so dedicated and we have a lot of passion for what we do and we will be more than happy to help you. It's an environment where we all learn and grow together. Um, you all know in this journey, we continuously learn and grow and continuously learn from each other, right? So please do not miss it. Um, reach us at admin at aishascomtech.com to enroll in our program. If you are actually listening to me right now, I know you've watched this video all the way to the end. Thank you so very much. Please hit that like and subscribe button um, so that you get notified when we are, and when we um, upload new videos. And thank you so very much. We appreciate you. God bless you. Bye. <laughs>